next we will look into the structured approach for this DFT design. So, this they come under the broad heading of scan design. So, it says it converts the sequential design into a scan design and as we have noted earlier in a scan design what happens is that the uh, flip flops that we have in the design. So, all those flip flops are converted into scan flip flops and they are connected over a chain. So, conceptually we can say that ok if this is my full chip and in that chip we have got a number of flip flops uh, distributed into this uh, design. So, testing such a system becomes difficult because these flip flops they are feeding some logic and for testing those uh, uh, parts of the logic. So, we need to put these flip flops into some value and for, um, for initial sequential ATPG techniques. So, they try to do these things so that uh, we can uh, somehow put these flip flops to our desired values, but that is very difficult because uh, it depends on the transition pattern of this finite state machine that we that gets created here. So, what is done in the scan design these flip flops are modified. So, that they become scan flip flops and in the scan flip flop mode. So, all these flip flops they can be connected over a chain from the some input which is known as scan input and they are connected over a chain like this. Okay. So, they are connected over a chain like this and now what happens is you can you, you can very easily set all these flip flops to some desired values and we can uh, get the uh, uh, test pattern part which is which should be loaded into these flip flops very easily uh, uh, loaded into them. So, this scan design will convert the sequential design into a scan design. So, when we have done this thing, so we need not consider the circuit anymore as a um, uh, sequential circuit, it can be treated as, treated as a combinational circuit only, because all these uh, inputs they can be controlled from outside. So, uh, there is no more requ requirement to check the flip flop. Of course, we need to check whether these flip flops are uh, uh, having correct values uh, there or not. Uh, we can we can they can load the proper values or not for that purpose. So, we can have some flush pattern may be we write so all zeros onto this uh, scan chain and pass it through this chain to see whether at the output also we are getting all zeros or not. Similarly, we can pass some other, other pattern like alternate 0 ones and see at the output whether the alternate 0 ones are coming or not. So, that way we can get the confidence that the scan chain is working properly and after that we can start applying the test patterns that uh, um, part of which uh, for every uh, for every test pattern part of it can be in this scan chain. Now, there are three modes of operation in a scan based design there are three modes of operation normal mode. So, in the normal mode of operation. So, this is all test signals are turned off. So, there is no scan chain coming into picture at this point of time the scan design operates as in the original configuration. So, we have got the same uh, original circuitry as the original circuitry is operating. Then there is uh, something called a shift mode. So, in the shift mode, so we shift the test pattern into the scan chain. So, that is the shift mode and then in the capture mode. So, the response of the circuit is captured corresponding to the applied test pattern. So, that way it can be the, the re response gets loaded into the scan chain and then there will be another shift out. So, which is not shown explicitly because that is basically a shift mode part in a shift mode while, while we are shifting in the next test pattern the previous response can be shifted out. So, that way we can uh, um, uh, do this uh, uh, shift or uh, this response shifting uh, together with the uh, um, pattern uh, test pattern shifting. So, this is the test mode signal T m is used to turn on the test related fixes all whatever test thing is necessary. So, this is the scan design. So, suppose we have got some stuck at fault at uh, this point f. Okay. Now, to excite this uh, fault f it may be necessary that we need uh, it may be requires that the primary input x 3 flip flop f 2 uh, f f 2 and the flip flop f f 3 they should be set to 0 1 and 0. So, this should be set to 0 this should be uh, set to uh, flip flop 2 should be set to 1 and flip flop 3 should be set to 0. So, this is the test pattern requirement. Now, as I was telling the difficulty is so this pair this bit uh, since this x 3 is a primary input. So, you can easily set it to 0, but the problem comes in setting these two bits to uh, 0 and 1. Why? 
because when you reset this uh, whole finite state machine. So, these uh, flip flops are in some state depending upon the start state of the system and then the transitions will occur into this flip flops as defined by the uh, finite state machine itself the specification of the finite state machine. So, after the say uh, um, so, whether I can get this particular state very easily or not. So, it depends on the F S N. So, what is done in case of uh, uh, scan circuit? So, this will be converted into a, a pure combinational one. So, and this is actually the difficulty that I was talking about in testing sequential circuit. So, getting this scan uh, getting the flip flops into some desired values. So, getting F F 3 to 0 and F F 2 to 1. So, in scan design what is happening is that this uh, the all these flip flops they are converted into a shift register and suppose if I have got n flip flops in the circuit then n uh, the shift register will consist of n scan cells and they are uh, so there is a test stimulus pin that is added to the system through this test stimulus pin the pattern will be uh, the, the this uh, register will be loaded serially in n clock cycles this shift register will be loaded serially. Now, uh, after this uh, shift register uh, shift register has been loaded then this uh, test stimulus will be applied to the circuit and then the response of the circuit will be captured onto this flip, uh, scan flip flops and then it will be done. So, for the previous uh, circuit that we had so previous circuit I have to apply I have uh, F 3 and F 2 as 0 and 1. So, what do you do? So, first of all we switch to shift mode and shift the desired test stimulus 1 and 0 to flip flop 2 and flip flop 3. So, this can be done uh, by shifting serially and then after this has been shifted then we apply 0 to the primary input x 3. Now, x 3 has got 0 flip flop 2 and flip flop 3 have got their desired values. Now, we switch over to capture mode and apply one clock pulse. So, that the circuit operates normally. So, that and the responses they get loaded into the flip flops. So, this uh, flip flop 1, 2 and 3 they have got their responses captured and then we go back to the shifting mode and we res, uh, shift out the response flip flop 2, 3, uh, two uh, 1, 2 and 3 for comparison with the external uh, the good response. So, what is happening? If this is the actual uh, this is if this is the circuit under test that we want to test that we that we want to test. Now, we have made a shift register which is also known as scan chain. So, in this scan chain we serially shift in. So, this is the uh, serial shift in serial shift in and after we have got this uh, data shifted in. So, we load this uh, pattern. So, this pattern will be applied to the circuit by means of applying uh, in the capture cycle by applying the uh, this input to the circuit. So, um, the test pattern is applied. Now, what happens is that uh, the circuit will respond with its uh, uh, with the output values and the output values will again be loaded onto this uh, scan chain. So, output values suppose these are the output values. So, they will again be loaded onto the scan chain. And once they have been loaded, then we can uh, shift out the response from the uh, chip. We can shift out the response from the chip uh, from the scan chain by again going to the next shift in mode. So, it, it will be shift out the uh, pattern and it will be uh, getting the output uh, visible at the scan chain output. So, what is done? So, we co convert uh, now uh, here what we have assumed is that if the circuit has got n flip flops then all those n flip flops are converted into scan cells. Now, if we uh, convert a selected range of them. So, it may it may be that we do we do not uh, convert all of them to scan flip flops because of some reason that we will see later. So, that may be converted into a partial scan type of design and then we need to stitch we need to connect between all these uh, the chains all these uh, flip flops to form a scan chain. Now, in a design I can have a single scan chain or I can have multiple scan chains. So, depending upon uh, the uh, design that we do 
or this uh, number of scan chains we create. So, we can have single scan chain, we can have multiple scan chain. So, both are possible. Of course, for if I have got multiple scan chain, then I must have uh, must, uh, the provision for loading those chains separately. So, in most of the cases, we have got multiple uh, scan input and scan, uh, scan in and scan out uh, pins for that or some another type of uh, uh, chaining can be done there, so that we can uh, uh, visualize them as uh, separate chains and load them in one, one chain at a time. Now, how do we convert a, as, as, as a normal flip flop or normal latch into a scan cell, normal sequential element into a scan cell. Say a scan cell, it will have two inputs, one is called a data input, another is called a scan input. In normal mode or in capture mode, data input is selected to update the output and in the shift mode, scan input is selected to update the output. So, we have got two modes, normal mode and shift mode, uh, normal mode, uh, normal and capture mode and shift mode. So, depending upon the mode, so that uh, the data input or the scan input will be going to the output. There are three widely used scan cell design techniques, one is the masked D scan cell clocked scan cell and LSSD scan cell. The first one, the masked D scan cell is like this. So, before the flip flop, we put a multiplexer. So, this, uh, this flip flop is the original flip flop that we had in the circuit. So, before that we put a multiplexer. So, this multiplexer has got two input, data input and scan input and there is a scan enable line. So, if this data input is, uh, uh, if we want that the circuit will operate normally, then this data input will be selected and this data input will go to this D flip flop and that, that way uh, the circuit will operate normally. On the other hand, if we are thinking about uh, putting some test pattern onto this, uh, onto this flip flop, then this scan input will be, uh, scan enable line will be made equal to 1 and the value that we put on the scan in line, so that will be loaded into this, uh, through this multiplexer it will come to the D flip flop. So, this edge triggered, uh, so this is this particular design is an edge triggered masked D scan cell. So, so it is possible that in my design I have got uh, edge triggered D flip flops. So, if, the, if my design uses these edge triggered D flip flops, so we can put multiplexers before that and convert it into uh, masked D scan cells. And since you can understand that this can be, this process can be automated. Uh, very easily. So, most of the CAD tools, uh, they will allow us to do this uh, change automatically. So, they, the, they can uh, do this conversion automatically. So, this is the uh, timing diagram. So, when you are applying say, uh, when this uh, scan enable, the, the SE line is 0. So, at that time, uh, whatever uh, be the content of data input DI. So, that uh, whenever the clock comes, so it gets loaded into the flip flop. Okay. So, this Q or the SO line, so they will be getting this. Q. So, now after some time, so here the, the clock was high, so the value D 1 got loaded. After that, this clock uh, comes again at this time, but by that time the scan enable line has been made high. So, when this clock comes, so instead of loading this data D 3, so it loads the test value T 3. Okay, the test input T 3 through this SI line and that T 3 is loaded here. So, this is the, uh, so depending upon this uh, scan enable line made low or high. So, either the data input is loaded or the scan input is loaded. Next, we consider level sensitive edge triggered design. So, what happens is that in some cases, uh, so in that masked D scan cell what was happening is that the flip flop that was being used, so that was a, that was an edge triggered flip flop. Now, if my design is such that uh, it uses level triggering, okay, so it does not use uh, this uh, uh, edge triggering. So, incorporation of this edge triggered flip flop into the system will uh, uh, interact with the design, so it, the design will not operate correctly. So, what is required is for my scan operation, I want this uh, edge triggering but for normal operation, I want level sensitive operation or this latch based design. So, this is basically this level sensitive edge triggered masked D scan cell design. So, what happens is for the normal operation of the system, this clock input is high 
and this uh, scan enable is low as a result what about is the data input it comes here so it goes to this d flip flop and then it goes to this q output okay so that that so this uh, level th this uh, latch will be operating as level sensitive latch for the clock and it goes there goes to the uh, q output so it operates as a d latch on the other hand when i am talking about the scan operation so scan operation is uh, edge triggered so the, this uh, the, this uh, this uh, the, i have a d flip flop here so that is edge triggered flip flop so when this uh, scan mode is on then this uh, scan value the si will be uh, coming to this uh, d input and then that uh, uh, so that that is uh, load uh, once it is there in this uh, uh, d input when the, this clock was high so the it got last here but the value will come to the scan cell only when this clock edge comes the negative edge of the clock comes so here on the when the le clock level was high at that time the value came here and when this now the clock edge goes down uh, on the falling edge of the clock the value get latched onto this flip flop so in this case the shift operation is conducted in an edge triggered manner while normal operation and capture are conducted in a level sensitive manner so if my design is such that it does not support uh, this uh, edge triggered operation it supports only level sensitive operation then this uh, instead of using this masked uh, cell we have to use this uh, masked d scan cell another possibility is that we have got two different clocks this uh, uh, data clock or two independent clock uh, data clock and this scan clock so this is another possibility so the, the cell is designed in such a fashion that it operates with two different clocks so this uh, when the data clock is given so the circuit operates in a normal mode and when this uh, scan clock is given the circuit operates in a scan mode so in a clock scan cell the input selection is conducted using these two independent clocks dck and sck and in the uh, so they are to be there so applying these clocks is a bit crucial because they are to be done in such a fashion that uh, they are not applied simultaneously okay so this has to be done so uh, they are applied in non overlapping fashion and that is ensured like uh, this testing is uh, done by some test engineer so the test engineer will definitely ensure that this data clock and scan clock they are non overlapping in nature so this is the operation of a clock scan cell so here uh, i have got so this is suppose the data input and this is the scan input when this uh, data clock is given the value d1 is uh, put into this q and when this uh, scan uh, uh, scan cell is uh, uh, scan clock is given then this scan data si is loaded into the flip flop so you see that we have got this uh, dck and sck so they are applied in a non overlapping fashion and when they are applied in non overlapping fashion so we can uh, uh, we can load the values onto the corresponding uh, uh, latch and the flip flop the q and so line can come accordingly so in normal or capture mode the data clock dck is used to capture the contents uh, present at the data input di into the clock scan cell the shift mode shift clock sck is used to shift in new data from scan input si into the clock scan cell while the content of the clock scan cell is being shifted out so that um, shifting is done simultaneously for uh, input test pattern and output response of previous pattern another uh, uh, type of design which is known as lssd scan cell here what happens is that uh, it is uh, used for level sensitive latch based design so here uh, the scan cell consists of two latches so this is a master two port latch l1 and a slave d latch l2 so clocks c a and b so these are the different clock signals so they are used to select between data input d and the scan input i to drive this l1 plus and l2 plus what happens is that so this is the latch so Uh, so you can so this line can directly drive the uh, it can it, this line can directly drive the combinational circuit or it can it may so happen that through a double latch it goes and after l1 it comes to l2 and from l2 it actually goes so to uh, we have got the, we have got to select between this a uh, plus l1 and plus h l2 in lssd design either plus l1 and plus l2 
can be used to drive the combinational logic part. So, that is the, so we have in some cases uh, so in some designs it is double latched design. So, the double latching is provided and if it is in some part is not double latched. So, it is um, uh, single latch then it will be going from plus L 1 only. So, this is the operation. So, when this uh, C clock is high. So, uh, when this C clock is high the latch L 1 uses the system clock C to get the data from D and put it onto the uh, output. So, this uh, D data is coming. So, D goes to plus L 1 it does not go to plus L 2 does it goes to only plus L 1 line. On the other hand this clock B is used uh, after uh, uh, clock A to latch the system data from latch L 1 and send the data to L 2. So, this uh, if you look into this uh, design first this uh, when this clock is applied. So, data is coming to L 1 and after that this uh, uh, this clock A is applied. So, that this L 1 data goes to L 2 and after that this clock B is applied. So, that this data that is coming here. So, that is going to plus L 2. So, if you want that the uh, circuit be driven by plus L 2. So, we have to apply clock in this sequence C followed by A followed by B. But if we want that it will be applied the data be uh, available from plus L 1 itself then we can uh, we do not need to apply this A and B. So, it can directly go from this uh, C. So, if your design does not support uh, this uh, edge triggered flip flop at all. Okay. So, in, uh, if suppose uh, in for, uh, in, uh, for my scan chain design also I do not use this uh, edge triggered flip flops. So, for that purpose I can use this type of design. So, that we can uh, uh, we can use this three clock C A and B in this sequence that is first C then A then B. So, that this content gets uh, shifted through this plus L 2 line. So, we have got some provision for that. So, to compare between this. So, this masked disk can sell. So, the compatibility where it is compatibility to modern design. So, that is there. Then uh, 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 disadvantage is that it adds one multiplexer delay. So, before the flip flop we have got a multiplexer. So, that multiplexer delay will come into picture. Uh, they provide comprehensive support uh, uh, for uh, to the ex by existing design automation tools. As I was telling uh, the process uh, is uh, very much automated now. So, you can ask the CAD tools to do this uh, scan chain insertion. So, it will find out all the flip flops that you have in the design and it will modify all those flip flops uh, to scan flip flops do the proper stitching between them. So, that you get the uh, scan chain uh, made. Uh, and uh, this clock scan cell. So, the advantage is that there is no performance degradation because now I do not have any multiplexer into the picture. So, uh, the flip flop does not have um, any multiplexer before it. So, the delay does not increase. So, even if that flip flop comes onto the critical path the delay is not increased. So, we have got uh, the performance uh, of this uh, system is not sacrificed. However, the disadvantage is that we require additional shift clock routing. So, that then as, as in the clock scan cell we have got two clocks. So, and the two clocks are to be distributed throughout the chip. So, wherever these uh, flip flops are there scan flip flops are there. So, there that both the clocks should go and uh, clock routing is one of the very important uh, problem in the VLSI design process because the skew in the clock the power consumption. So, they play major role in deciding how the clock should be distributed. Now, if you have uh, this another clock into picture. So, then that also has to be routed and uh, sent to different parts. So, that increases the complexity further. And for LSSD scan cell. So, we can insert scan into a latch based design. So, this is the point I was talking about. So, if that if your design uh, philosophy does not allow uh, flip flop based design. Okay. So, previously whatever technique we have discussed the scan part. So, that was done by the flip flop. So, uh, but uh, for circuit oper normal operation it was through it may be through latch, but for uh, uh, scan part. So, this is done by the flip flop. So, if the design philosophy does not allow you to have this uh, flip flop based design then uh, what to do. Okay. So, then we have to have latch based design only then this LSSD chain the LSSD scan cell design. So, that is actually allowing us uh, that uh, 
avenue. So, it can you can have a full uh, latch based design of your scan chain and by controlling this C A and B properly. So, you can uh, uh, make it to operate as a scan cell. So, it guarantees uh, to be rest, uh, rest free and it also increases the routing complexity. Okay. So, stop here in this lecture continue in the next one.